All right, everybody, and welcome back. You haven't seen me in a while. It's Tony again here. Uh, I know it's been a hot minute. Um, and just before we get started today, I wanted to uh, wish uh, best of health and best of safety to everybody out there. You know, here in New York, we're starting to see um, restrictions loosen up. Um, obviously, there's a lot going on in the world. And um, uh, here in New York, obviously, we're starting to see reopening phases. But as at the same time, parts of the United States, many parts of the world still going through the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. So again, best of health and safety to you, your loved ones, um, uh, your colleagues, everybody. Um, but our video today... Uh, and Google just sent those emails out this morning. And uh, again, I really, before anything else, stress that this is a good thing. This is very good. Um, I've started to notice um, merchants asking us, they're, they're really expressing a lot of concern, doubt. They're confused about what exactly this, is, uh, this entails. Um, but pretty simply, every year, Google makes changes to the product data feed specifications for Google Merchant Center. Um, and those, that's essentially the outline of the required optional attributes that merchants have to submit to merchants either through their product feed to uh, enable them to be able to use programs such as shopping campaigns and Google ads, services across Google where you're going to get those free Google shopping listings they announced back uh, in April, um, and then uh, shopping actions, which is Google's uh, marketplace solution, essentially. Uh, but every year, Google makes changes, enhances this data, loosens restrictions, and they just announced uh, the 2020 uh, changes. It comes in two parts. There's some immediate changes and some stuff that happens in September um, of this year. Um, but all around, very good news. Um, I'm going to go over some of them briefly with you real quick, and I'm going to show you uh, an example of, uh, within our app, how you can kind of spot uh, some of these changes uh, come September, okay? So... Again, 2020 Merchant Center product data feed specification. Uh, you can check out this page. I'll put a link down to it. This is the Google support page on it. I'm also going to link to a couple articles and resources to help you um, take advantage of some of the new attributes that Google's introducing. Yes, there are new attributes. I'm really excited about that. I haven't seen new attributes out of Google in quite some time. Um, but immediately, uh, we have three, uh, or I'm sorry, four distinct changes, installment and subscription cost attributes. So this is mostly affecting anybody that says wireless products or any product that has a script subscription or installment plan on it. Um, where you might also see this where with satellite devices or sat navs, for example, Garmin products, um, I've seen those come with some kind of subscription or, 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 or pay or payment process you have to go through. Um, but these are attributes that those types of merchants can submit now, um, only for approved countries for shopping ads. Um, now, if you submit these values for, important note, if you try to use these attributes for products that they're not associated with, you could wind up with uh, disapproval. So don't do that. Um, if you sell shoes, you don't need an installment or subscription cost, most likely, right? Unless your shoes um, are also uh, serve a dual purpose as a, as a mobile phone. Um, but two, two new attributes, really exciting. Product detail and product highlight. Um, much like product descriptions or product titles, uh, this seems like these seem like two attributes we can start to enhance product data with, um, give data more data, uh, give sorry Google more data and more data quality, so that your products have a better stand a better chance of showing up in the search results when it's matched to a query of, of a potential shopper. Uh, the detail attribute is um, essentially an attribute you can provide additional technical specifications that other aren't covered in, let's say, your product description or your product title, maybe even your product type. Um, and the highlight uh, is another new attribute that you can add just a couple sentences to highlight uh, the most important, like the, the, the standout features, right? And again, I think these are two really important attributes because you can start to really emphasize um, your key terms that you want products to show up for in these particular attributes. They're brand new. Um, right now you could use a supplemental feed. And again, I'm going to post a link to a guide on how to use a supplemental feed for Google right in the description below. Um, but this is huge. I think that these can be extremely beneficial. Um, and, and our team is working with Google and, and uh, on in bringing these attributes into our app and sales and order. So you can begin to um, add them or optimize them within our app. Um, but again, I'll show you, I'll, I'll post that link below so you can see how to start using these right now. Uh, and I think these are great. I think any, any merchant can really start using them. It's very important. And I think you should start um, looking into how to start uh, adding these to your feed. Um, 
moving down, we have the sale price annotations. Now, if anybody's not familiar with sale price annotations, essentially, if you have a shopping ad unit um, and if you have a sale on a particular product, it's not only marked by a small badge that says sale, uh, but you can also have a sale price annotation. And essentially, what happens is the uh, the regular cost is has a strike through, and then the sale price is highlighted or it's enhanced in the shopping ad unit. Um, and then, of course, they have that little badge that says sale. Um, they've relaxed the requirements for these. So uh, originally it was a little bit harder for merchants to be able to get sale price annotations. Now it's a bit easier. Um, in order to show it, you need the base price or the higher price must have been changed within a period of at least 30 days. So if you did recently make or maybe added some sales, um, it's really obvious we're getting into the warmer summer months right now. If you're selling outdoor furniture, outdoor gear, hiking product, you know, things like that. Maybe you have a special sale going on. Hopefully you're using merchant promotions as well, but, uh, merchants might actually might have a better chance of having sale price annotations, uh, on their shopping ads. They're relatively uncommon. I don't see them that often. Um, but again, it's, it's automated. You don't have to do anything more than submit a sale price through the feed um, and obviously have your regular price in there as well. But Google is going to automatically determine which products are eligible for the sale price annotations. Uh, it's a great uh, relaxation. Um, I think it's going to help merchants um, substantially. And again, the theme of 2020 for Google is kind of twofold. It's been uh, to help merchants more easily surface the products on Google, whether that's um, obviously, with the, the free listings that came out, uh, enhancements, enhancements to shopping ads, uh, shopping actions, obviously, the marketplace solution from Google, um, and now sale price annotations. Um, and there's more to that. Um, obviously, this is all also to help consumers find more readily find products on Google, and in turn, more, shop, more uh, merchants can get their products in front of far more shoppers than ever before. Um, now, moving down, the changes that have that are coming up in September. Again, everybody, these are great. This is all great news, and I don't want anybody to stress about it. I, w I don't want anybody to uh, have any confusion or concern. Um, it really isn't going to hurt you. None of these things are going to hurt you in any manner, shape, or form. Um, but essentially, Google. Now, a while ago, Google lessened its restrictions on. Um, GTINs. So those are things such as uh, UPCs or EANs, ISBNs for books, for example. Um, but though the, the GTIN is no longer required by Google, um, but as long as it is still submitted, uh, your, well, your product ads have more of a chance of showing up, essentially. Um, and that Google is going to register that you've submitted a GTIN, a UPC, for example. You're, it's going to give your product ad more quality. Um, and it's, for example, you know, if you submit one, your uh, competitor does not, you have more of a chance to show up than they do if you do submit a G10. Um, now, Google's relaxing the restrictions for, and these occur mostly for apparel and accessories merchants, the attributes of gender, age group, size, and color. Um, and these are m a big point of contention for many merchants because um, it's, it's, uh, it's the one ca product category that you have to submit a lot more product data for than other uh uh, product categories, for example. Um, but also back, about a while back, Google um, started automatically mapping uh, products for Google product categories. Now, Google, Google product category follows Google product taxonomy. It's designated, designated by Google. Originally, you had to map it and submit it yourself. Uh, or if you didn't, it just, you didn't have one. Um, it doesn't necessarily help with data quality or enhancing shopping ads, for example. But it is important, I would say, for the shopping tab and those free product listings. It's an, an ability, it gives Google more of an ability or it gives shoppers a, a more ways to filter for products that they might be looking for. Um, now, with Google relaxing the restrictions on gender, age group, size, and color, first of all, for one, merchants that are having trouble submitting these or if they've submitted before and products were disapproved and they just haven't had the time to be able to fill them in on their store and, and get them out to Google, um, your products are no longer going to be disapproved due to these uh, missing attributes. Um, however, much like the GTINs, um, there's going to be a um, limited performance due to uh, not submitting these particular attributes. It's a best practice. You should submit them. Don't 
Don't not submit them just because Google's lessening, uh, lo loosening the restrictions on them. Continue to submit them when you, when you sell these products. Um, and it's important to note, if you don't submit a Google product category within your feed, Google's gonna automatically designate one for you. Now that means that there's a chance that your product could get tagged as a particular category that falls under these uh, requirements or even these loosening restrictions of, as of September, for example. Um, and you wanna make sure that you are using tools like, again, like our app, like sales and orders to map your category so you can, you know, obviously you determine what your category is going to be. But it is only when Google assigns or you assign a, a product category that fits under the media or the, the obviously the parent category of apparel and accessories, it's only when your products get designated as such that, they, that Google begins to start requiring gender, age, group, size, and color. Continue to submit them. Don't worry too much about it. Come September, if you're not submitting them or if you haven't submitted them in the past, uh, your products are still going to be eligible to serve on Google. Um, they're just not going to have uh, as much of an opportunity to as compared to, let's say, your competitor who is submitting them, right? Um, same goes for our description attribute, and that comes up here. The description attribute is now technically optional, I guess. Um, again, Google saying it's still required, but if you don't submit one, again, uh, the product will still be eligible to serve, but the performance might be limited. Please do not stop submitting or, or start writing product descriptions. They're incredibly important, not only for on-site purposes, but obviously within your feed, there it's where you can uh, really uh, front load and, 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 ha and put a lot of emphasis on your, on your key terms for your products, such as, again, for your product titles, your, your product type, for example, and description. Those are your key attributes for all that data. And now obviously we have the product detail attribute and the product highlight attribute, which you can begin to use as well. And if you're doing through a supplemental feed, you'll just be adding a column for product detail or product highlight to begin to be able to submit those. Um, but please still submit product descriptions. Very important. It, it, this doesn't mean you shouldn't submit them. That, that's for sure. Um, material pattern image link attributes. Um, this, uh, update coming in September. It's not too much of a big deal. I don't think it's really going to affect too many people at all. Uh, essentially for the attributes for material pattern image link, don't submit multiple uh, values for uh, within that one attribute for a given product. Um, for material and pattern, you can, but use uh, uh, slashes or hyphens, don't use commas. Uh, and if you wanted to submit additional images, use the additional image link attribute. You can do also do this with a supplemental feed within uh, Merchant Center. Um, but don't just like, don't again, don't put a bunch of images with commas or, or anything within the standard image link uh, attribute. Um, but again, all is very, very good news. Uh, they're loosening restrictions for certain merchants. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier for people to get started and get their feet wet with, with things like such, such as shopping ads on Google or even uh, the free listings on the shopping tab. Um, but I, I just wanted to emphasize that just because Google loosens restrictions on particular attributes doesn't mean that you should not be submitting them. Um, if you want more quality uh, for your products, if you want more quality product data, if you want Google to recognize your products and, and have a better chance to show up in the search results when somebody's searching, continue to submit these attributes, please. Now, uh, I, I, what, the one thing with this is, I think the, the key term here is the um, eligible to serve, but performance may be limited. So come September, I'm gonna point out a, um, how you can see this, and I'm gonna use our app to show you that. Um, but if you're, uh, and now we're in our in sales owners right now, I'm in our demo accounts here. Um, if come September, you're not, you know, maybe you don't have size, color, or gender, age group in certain products. Um, I'll also show you really quickly how you can map those in our, in our uh, feed tool, very easy to do. Um, let's say you didn't submit those, you're not submitting those, even you're not sending your description um, now that Google's made this update. Um, this is the warning that Google's going to give you. Now, again, it's unaffected. It doesn't mean that your products are disapproved. It just means that they're not going to um, show up as often when people search. Essentially, that's what limited performance means. But you should really keep an eye out for this. It's in Merchant Center, or if you're using sales on orders, you can do this right in the issues tab. You come down under account issues. 
and you're looking for limited performance due to missing value. And in this case, we have the missing GTIN. As I had previously mentioned, this is when Google a while back had loosened restrictions on GTINs, and this is the error code that you're gonna be looking for. Now, be sure to keep an eye out for it, um, and where you can when you spot this, try to ensure that you're um, going back and you're, uh, you're updating your products uh, in your site, um, and if you're using your app, you're importing your products, hanging out to Google to clean up and make sure that your products are showing up um, and that you stand a chance. Again, if your competitors are doing it, your products stand less of a chance to show up uh, when somebody searches online if you're not submitting these attributes. Now again, for things such as uh, age group and gender, very easy to map in our tool. If uh, you haven't been able to do that in your e-commerce store, for example, and you're using our app, after you've installed and you've got connected, you come over to the modified products tool, you click on an attributes such as age group, and you can build a very simple rule. Let's say you only sell adult products for adults. You can literally map every single product to the uh, age group for adult, save, send out to Google, and you're all done. Um, and again, please uh, do me a favor. Check out the, pro the, the video description below. I have a couple of links. I'm going to submit one. For, I'm going to put one in here for um, using a supplemental feed. Uh, I also put a link to the article from Google. Um, and again, if you have any questions, you have any concerns, if you're working with us already for using our app, jump in, hop on live chat with our team. Um, very easy to do. You can just open up a live chat uh, question with us and you can ask us about this at any time. Um, if you're having, if you're confused about it, if you're worried about it, if you need to know where to find certain uh information within your sales and orders account, obviously you can uh, live chat with our team. Oh, also in the description, a guide to supplemental feeds so you can actually see how to do that at Merchant Center so you can begin to start using some of these new attributes such as your product details and your product highlights. All right, everybody, it's been a great time. I, um, I'm really excited to be back online here. I've uh, been very busy for quite some time and um, happy to get back into the swing of things. I'll be doing a few videos uh, every week. Uh, stay tuned. If you get an opportunity, subscribe to our channel. You can hit us up on Twitter, on uh, Facebook, or even on LinkedIn. Um, and again, stay healthy, stay safe, and remain informed. All right. Have a good one, everyone.